So I wanted to make a DC generator in Roblox, you know, with a commutator, electric and magnetic fields, you know the deal. But an issue was that I had to program actual physics into it. So I tried. But first I had to make basic circuits, like the wire, resistor, battery, etc. And to make a DC generator, I'd have to somehow approximate magnetic fields or something. Man. So the idea was to make a circuit simulation using nodes or a lattice, if you will, using parts. And my confidence was sky high and I was going to make Voltage is analogous to gravitational potential energy and current is analogous to kinetic energy. For example, at this point before you drop the part, there's a lot of gravitational potential energy but zero kinetic energy. And after dropping, the gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. And right before it hits the ground, there's almost zero gravitational potential energy, but a ton of kinetic energy. Now this is similar to voltage. Say we have two positively charged particles that are fixed. There is a force. The closer they are, the more they want to repel. Let's say we release one of them. And it zooms off, which means this point has a ton of electric potential energy. Once it moves farther away, the force weakens and the electric potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. We can give each point here a value in joules, which is the unit of energy, to denote how much electric potential energy is at that point. However, we can normalize this by dividing by the charge, so that if I place one coulomb of charge here, I get the amount of joules of electric potential energy. And joules per unit charge is voltage. But to say a point has 100 volts is like saying a part is 2 feet high. It only makes sense if you know what you're measuring it from. If the particles move from here to there, electric potential energy is converted. But we need to pick a zero to define where this potential energy finally runs out and becomes kinetic energy. So we pick a reference point, a point infinitely far away, and we call it zero volts. And this idea of giving each point a voltage is pretty similar to the idea of nodes. In circuits though, we choose a reference point called ground or zero volts, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, now that's over, let's go on to current. Current is how much charge moves through an area per unit time, but you need voltage to propel those charges to actually get current. So voltage is a cause and current is the effect, similar to how you need gravitational potential energy to get kinetic energy. However, there has to be a difference in potential energy, whether it be electric or gravitational, for anything to happen. If you stay at the same height, there's no conversion to kinetic energy. If two points are at 9 volts relative to ground, no current will flow between them. And resistance means the opposition to the flow of electric current. Higher resistance makes the current flow harder, converting electrical energy into heat, which is why there's a voltage drop between two points connected by a resistor. The relationship between them is that the voltage difference between two points is equal to current times resistance. Ohm's law. Also, there's Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the total current flowing into a junction or node must exactly equal the total current flowing out of it. And Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is about the conservation of energy, stating that the total source voltage supplied in a loop must be exactly equal to the sum of the voltage drops, or more commonly known as the sum of the voltages equals zero. Okay, let's check out my models. So the first model isn't really a model, but a scuffed idea. So I tried modeling using fields or something, which were essentially just spheres around wires. I don't know, which is why we don't talk about the first model. Let's move on. So I realized that circuits are modeled using nodes, so that's the idea. However, I came across an issue. If there's no voltage drop in an ideal wire, then why does current flow? But hey, a voltage difference is applied by this battery, pushing charges through the material with zero resistance, so the charges will just keep flowing. It's kind of like Newton's first law essentially, stuff keeps moving unless acted upon. Now, for this second model though, I mainly just made it to lay the foundations for the simulation, module scripts like the circuit graph, which is just a dictionary for nodes and their neighbors, the visualizer to see what's happening, the node generator to generate the nodes, and the simulator to do the math part. 
because I mainly just wanted to lay the foundations and test the program, I essentially just did scuff the math purely for visuals. And it looks pretty cool, even if the numbers don't make any sense. However, while making the simulator, I knew I had a goal. A goal to avoid complicated math as much as possible. And what I dreaded most was the matrix. During this time though, I had some lofty ideas of laying out the foundations or ideas for other electrical components, like diodes, capacitors, transistors, or inductors. My initial idea was to make a custom node for each component. Now did it work? Hmm, well you're gonna have to watch the rest of the video to see. Third attempt. This time, I was actually going to do a realistic-ish attempt that's going to use KCL, KVL, and Ohm's Law. So here's my logic. Say you have four nodes, one ground 0 volts, the other 9 volts, and each node is connected via some ohm resistor. So here's the setup. Now we don't know what V2 and V3 is, so we have to solve for V2 and V3. Node 2 has two neighbors, one with V1 volts and the other with V3 volts, so we use Ohm's Law. So V1 minus V2, all divided by R1, is the current entering from 1 to 2. For the current leaving, going from 2 to 3, it's V3 minus V2 divided by R2. But pause. Generally, we can't just assume that V3 minus V2 divided by R2 is negative or leaving. This only works here because it's pretty obvious that V2 is greater than V3. Anyways, we know the sum of these two currents must be zero because positive means current going in, negative means current going out. So equals to zero. Then we solve for V2 and we get this. And since conductance G is 1 over R, we just substitute. Now, notice that the numerator is a sum of voltage times conductance, and the denominator is a sum of conductances. And boom, that's our formula. For our specific scenario, let's assume all resistors are 1 ohm. We assume 0 volts as first, so we plug in the numbers and we get 4.5 volts. But this is a loop, so after we update V2 with the formula, we use V2 to update V3, and so on. And this is actually called a Gauss-Seidel step, essentially where you have a bunch of linear equations, start with a guess, in this case we assume 0 volts, we update each variable, and after a full sweep, we get a new set of voltages. And we then use this to update the next set, and so on and so forth. At some point, we'll get to a fixed point, such as applying the update function won't change the value any longer. And that is the solution to our set of linear equations. Testing this out, it seems decently accurate. Ah, uh, what? Why did the voltage drop to zero at the first resistor? Um, okay. Turns out setting an ideal wire to 10 to the power of negative 9 ohms gives you very large conductances. So large that other components like resistors don't have any say in the equation, meaning that the voltage drops immediately at the first resistor. Now, Voltage propagates properly in ideal wires because both have the same magnitude. So what's the fix? Just make it so that ideal wires have 0 0.01 ohms of resistance. And yeah, now the results are more accurate, but still, they don't match with actual calculations. Also, how do I know that the current here is accurate? I mean, this works even if the two terminals aren't connected. How about series batteries? How about parallel ones? How about resistors? Now, before any components, I knew I had to fix this. Before I added more batteries, more transistors, capacitors, I had to make parallel and series resistances 100% accurate. Now, I had tons of iterations, but the main math stayed the same most of the time, until I decided on a simple scope. During this time, I considered to just turn it into an Arduino simulator, components I can easily program, something simpler or as use a 2D system of nodes connected with actual components and terminals so I could be more accurate. But no. In the depths of linear algebra, nearly 2,000 years ago, Chinese mathematician Liu Wei described the method of solving linear systems involving arrays of equations, later refined by Gauss and other European mathematicians. This method could solve all equations simultaneously no matter how many unknowns were involved. It was called Gaussian Elimination. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. Let's get back to the four-node system from earlier, 
Remember these equations? We could represent it using a matrix like this. Multiply it out and you get the equation essentially. Basically it's just a way of representing sets of linear equations. So what's special? Well we can perform Gaussian elimination which is just a sequence of matrix operations to turn this matrix into its row echelon form which looks like this, often identifiable with the staircase pattern of zeros. Why is this important? Well, after performing Gaussian elimination on this matrix, for example, you'd get this. You can essentially just do back substitution and solve all equations because each linear equation only has one variable like this. So this is the result of the simulation and it's pretty interesting. However, I'm going to have to test it out with basic parallel and series circuits. No multiple batteries though, because I was too focused on making the base accurate. Okay, so we have a 220 volt battery, 4 resistors, 2 series, 2 parallel. Here are my calculations. This is just basic circuits. And here's what the simulator did. I mean the solver isn't doing anything wrong. I mean the current, you know, it's pretty correct. They combine such, such. But still, I was flabbergasted by this result because our calculations did not match. However, I just decided to check for the resistances of the nodes and I noticed something interesting. This is a 3 ohm resistor, but the program is treating it like a 1.5 ohm resistor. The 4 ohm resistor is being treated like a 2 ohm resistor, and etc. So I had to check the circuit graph for this error. So the circuit graph is just a Lua program where each node is given a specific entry and in those entries are the entries of its neighbors. This just lets the simulator know the layout of the circuit. Turns out Lua had some operator precedence issues so I just switched out the code with this. And now it works. Yeah it works. Look, 46.66 amps in total. Let's check how much current flows here. 20 amps. How much voltage here? 140 volts and it matches. It also tried other circuit configurations too and it works. How about parallel and series batteries? Well I didn't really implement that yet but I'm pretty proud that it works. Now I did plan to add many other electrical components but eh, never mind. Maybe part 2 if I feel like it. Anyways you can use hashtag video idea to give me video ideas in the comments so I can make more stuff. Thanks for watching.